Let's begin with who gets the blame if the government does shut down this Friday. David Corn's Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones and MSNBC analyst as well, of course. And John Fury's a great, always a good sport and a Republican <laughs> strategist. And you're going to have to be a good sport tonight because you are on the losing end of this Titanic. Uh, we'll uh, see. If there's a government shutdown, here's what would happen. 800,000 federal workers would be furloughed. That means out of pay off the job. Pay for our troops would be halted. IRS refunds to people will be suspended. In other words, the checks won't go out. Federal Housing Authority loans, FHA loans, interrupted. That's your word, interrupted, by the way. If it's your loan, it interrupted. It stopped for a while. Passports would go unprocessed, and unemployment benefits might be suspended. So that's a lot of action, David Korn, for the Republicans. Do they really want to kill government? Do they really hate it so much that they're willing to take blame for killing it for a while? I think half of them say yes. I mean, this is the problem that John Boehner is having, that I, I don't believe he wants to shut down. I, he was around in 1996 when it happened and saw Bill Clinton turn it to a political advantage. But I do believe that part of that Tea Party freshman class does want to see a shutdown. They, 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 they yearn for it. They hanker for it. And they don't care what the numbers are, whether it's $40 billion, $50 billion, $60 billion, They actually want to see the government shut down because they hate it that much. And somehow, and they don't even care about blaming the president for it. They want to see government killed. Let me go to John Fury on that, because I think you represent the Republican Party, not the Tea Party. Normally, it seems to me that John Boehner is in his post-nasal drip state right now. <laughs> uh, he's in a lacrimose mood. I look at him almost ready to go completely wet in the face, because he has to defend a group he's happy with, Republicans and party chairs and committee chairs that he's worked with for 10 or 20 years, and these wild people that basically want to do, I believe you're right, David Corn, want to shut down government to make a point. In fact, because they don't like government. Well, uh, Chris, isn't of course, it true I, that the Tea Party I, people yeah. don't like government? I, I, I disagree. Uh, let me let me point. Well, point how about answer my things. question? Don't First put Michelle all, Bachman on me. Is it true <laughs> let me, uh, that Republicans of the Tea Party sort really would just like to see less government? They'd like to see government shut down for a while because they think they could probably live without it. Well, well, it's no secret that some members of the Tea Party are angling for a government shutdown, but that's not the real story. The real story here is that it's Harry good enough Reed, for us. Well, it's not, that's actually <laughs> not accurate. You know, I think that, uh, Chris, everyone will get blamed. Both sides get blamed when the government shuts down. I think the president will take the majority of the blame because he's in charge. I would say the person who deserves the majority of the blame, though, is Harry Reid, the Senate Majority Leader, who I think he and Chuck Schumer both think that this helps them politically if the government shuts down, and then they can blame the Republicans. I can tell you who does not want a government shutdown. That's John Boehner, because he lived through it. I think that for patriotic reasons, he doesn't want a government shutdown. And I think for political reasons, he does not want to shut down. But, but I do John, think that... Uh, let's yeah, take a look ahead. at this. But, 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 uh, we've got a report on that that may uh, challenge what you just said, John Fury. In all fairness, let's get it out. Politico reports today that House Speaker John Boehner, the man you just mentioned, told House Republicans this Monday, that's a couple days ago, quote, the Democrats think they benefit from a government shutdown. I agree with them. Now, here's the problem. What's the point of that? Isn't that something you're worried about, that the Speaker of the House you just mentioned does believe in quiet in the back room with fellow Republicans mm -hmm. the Democrats win this game if the government shuts down? Well, I'll tell you what. I was there, I was there in 1995, 1996. Well, you weren't there Monday. I wasn't there Monday. But <laughs> okay. we'll, say, well, we're talking about Monday, say, John, not the I, history uh, lesson here. What uh, happened Monday? Why did Boehner say this time around the Tea Party looked like the wild people and they looked like the bad guys? You didn't well, have so Tea I, Party I, people I, back I, in the 90s. The, 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 pre, the president, we had uh, kind of Tea Party people in, back in the 1990s. Uh, let me say that the, the, you know, the, the John Boehner understands the politics of this. He understands also, and, and there's a different cast of characters here in the leadership. They all all saying the same thing, which is we do not want the government to shut down, which is far different than what happened in 1995 and 96 when they said they didn't want the government to shut down. But this is my saying. point. I believe that the whole, both sides will get the blame. I think this is bad for President Obama as well. But what they're saying, John, is if you don't really give us more, uh, more than half of what we want, we will see a government shutdown. They asked for $61 billion in cut. We're now up to $33 billion. That's over half. They okay. only control David. one house. David. They only control one house of Congress, John. And David. they're still saying that's the, not good enough. There's and a now different, they're there's a different over, dynamic now here. Now they're yeah. arguing over point. 0.83 percent of the budget. That, there's a different dynamic. There's the, a different they're dynamic, not going to the president. Okay, what's going to happen here is tomorrow. Shut it down over okay, point eight, what's going to happen here tomorrow is the Republicans are going to pass a continuing resolution that's going to include Pentagon spending, and they're going to send it to Harry Reid, and then Senator Reid's got to make a decision: Am I going to pass this, or am I going to get blamed for the government shutdown? And that's how this story is going to progress. Now here's a question I have for you, John Fury. It seems to me the Republicans can see a little causality here, the, the voters out there. They go, 
You know, whenever the Republicans come charging into Washington, whether it's Newt Gingrich or whoever, or it's this guy, uh, the Tea Party people, it's not really Boehner, he's been here. They say, wait a minute, then the government gets shut down. They do see the cause out. They think government shut well, down, they think Newt Gingrich. They see government shut down, <laughs> they see Republicans come in here in a rage. They don't like government, they're shutting it down. Well, don't they think that? Like, you don't think people see that? Well, what happened in 96, 97, 98 is we balanced the budget, we passed military oh, we reform, go. and the economy grew. So, I, you know what? If that's what happens this time, uh, okay. I'm all, all, all for uh, a small under, shutdown. Under, under okay. Bill Clinton. Clinton, that was, yes. Well, under, under Newt Gingrich, you know, here, Let's take a look at the New York Times. Clinton was just signing those things. Let's look at this New York Times description of an exchange between the president and the speaker at the White House yesterday. Quote, according to one person in the room, the president then encouraged Mr. Boehner to figure out how to go to your caucus and declare victory. You're already most of the way to where you wanted to go. So the president there is coaching Boehner politically on the fact that <laughs> Boehner clearly would, he doesn't have to coach him, John. You know Boehner would like to be out of the woods right now yeah. on this. He, he looks like he's ready to die over this thing. He looks like, remember the Irish guy in casino and the head, head in the vice down in the basement there in the factory. I, I don't think and he, a, yeah. He's a tough Irish but we got your head in the vice. It's just like that. Boehner's got the Tea no. Party on one side, the president, they're both squeezed, and then he's got crazy P Pence on the look, top pushing that, him on, on birth control. Chris, Chris, I mean, you know he's what, got Chris, so you know many Chris, squeezes Chris, on his head, no wonder he's juicing. The, the, president said yesterday, the president said yesterday, why don't we act like adults? And the only one who's acting like an adult during this whole thing is John Boehner. I think what he's going to come out looking pretty good. I really do. Did you write that ahead of time, that last line? You wrote that down ahead of time. You couldn't be thinking that yeah, right now. It, Nobody like thinks this. like that in this conversation. It depends. He, he looks like an adult okay. if he can control okay. the kindergartners in his wild class, well, the Tea Party folks. Then maybe sure, he looks no like problem, an adult. No but okay. so far, he's not doing that. He looks like the substitute, See, the he's, substitute he's very school teacher and he's who's pass, being well, pushed around. around. Okay, and you guys talk at the same time. Let me try it this way. I'll talk. You guys listen. Uh, you you have ahead. a schoolyard fight here, basically. I admit it doesn't have a lot of maturity to it. But I look at the president's debonair quality the other day. Calm, collected, no sweating, no schwitzing. I'm up in New York. Absolutely calm, <laughs> like in this fight. Then I see Boehner. Let's get a look at Boehner up here. The face is ready to break out, and it doesn't look like into <laughs> laughter. The guy looks like he's under... Oh, oh, I feel for the guy. How can you not fear? You fear for this guy. Feel well, for him, not fear well, for him, fear. I, I th I think and my feeling is the guy is in pain. Give him some sympathy. He doesn't want to be where he is. Look at him. Do you think that guy wants this fight? Then look at well, Obama. He's well, Mr. Think, Charm City. The guy looks great. I'm sorry, that's Baltimore. He looks great. <laughs> I think John Boehner wants to cut spending as much as he can. Look at him. Look at looks like he just won and the, the World Wrestling Championship. Look at this guy. He's, and he's I think happy. He's be very successful. Okay. John Boehner has already won most of the fight, okay. yet he's not conceding anything else. If he doesn't, he's going to look like he's leading. Or Why being do you guys always want to shut down the government? Uh, John Fury, what is it about? I mean, some guys always want to shoot spitballs or tell jokes or whatever. Why do Republicans always come? to town and say, let's shut down the government. Well, I remember when uh, 1990, when George, when uh, uh, Tom Foley shut the government down for a weekend. I mean, this this happens. They, they, these are two different parties with two different big uh, philosophies, and they're coming okay. at it, and they're and they're yeah. negotiating, and that's what happens. Okay, sometimes. let's take a look they're at a poll. We got a brand new poll now. out tonight, guys. Now so they're holding, break Bader's this tie. Holding, it shows that 68 percent of Democrats think their party's leaders should compromise on the budget. Only 25 percent think they should stick to prison. Now, to catch that number, almost seven out of ten want to compromise. Democrats yeah. among Republicans. 56% are opposed to their leaders forging any compromise. Why is one party want a deal and the other party doesn't want a deal? First, David Corn, <laughs> All by yourself, David Corn. Why well, does your you, part of the you. world want to compromise, at least the center left, and the other party doesn't want to compromise at all? What's going on? I think they're being more responsible. I think they're realizing that we have divided government right now. The way to deal with divided government is try to come up with compromises, which also, which often means cutting it down the middle more or less, no, whether you like it or not. That is Obama's perspective. A lot of people on the left think he should be fighting more, and right. that he's given too much. Yet that doesn't seem to be Boehner's okay. perspective right now, where he had a good deal. John, same question. Why is the Democratic Party want a deal and, the, and compromise, and the Republican Party doesn't? In fact, no, we I, checked I, it out. I, 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 it's I the Tea that, Party people that don't want to compromise. The regular Republicans want to compromise. Your well, I think, in the, I think in the Senate, they have a lot of 23 Democratic senators up, and they want to be on the right side of the American people, which means they want to cut spending. Yeah. So I think that that's why. But the problem is that Harry Reid and the senators have not passed the budget in two years, and they've been completely irresponsible, and they're not getting any of the blame, which I think is shocking the, to me. They, so they I do agree with you on that one point. I think, isn't he right, uh, David, in this regard? Yeah. Democrats do feel government does have a spending and a deficit problem, and something ought to be done to address it, and they're willing to compromise to do it. The Republicans recognize there's a problem with the deficit and debt, and we all do, and they're not willing to compromise. 
Well, they don't seem to be, and the Democrats are willing to talk about revenue enhancements okay. and all sorts of things. And Republicans <laughs> yeah, are, are, are tax saying increases. they just want to. You <laughs> can call it, yeah, well, they don't believe in giving tax okay. breaks to the rich while okay, you're cutting by the way, Medicare. You know, John, 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 you know why you're wrong? John, you know why you're wrong today, not you, but why? your party? Why if you that? really want a deal, you won't be throwing everything in like the kitchen sink. If Mike Pence really wanted a deal, he wouldn't be talking about birth control. If Mike Pence really wanted a deal, he no. wouldn't be talking, the speaker wouldn't be talking about, in this case, climate change. They're making all <laughs> kinds of add-ons to this discussion, the riders they call it, to make well, it more harder a deal to make. If they wanted a deal, they wouldn't be Chris, pulling all this social stuff in. Chris, you're, you're a man of the House. I understand. You, you love the House of Representatives as much as I do. The House worked its will and passed its bills. And the fact of the matter is the Senate has not done anything okay. like that. Well, and the I think that they have the right like... to stand up for what okay. they passed. Okay. The you, you know, you spent all these years since working in the House going into the Michelle Bachman School of Argument. No, it's not no, doing no, you no. well. It's discussion. always changing the subject. You are not hypnotized, but you are dangerously in trouble. <laughs> thank you, David Korn. And thank sure you, John Fury.